hi again. So today um, I thought I'd talk about a particular practice. So yeah, we do the Metta Bhavana, we do the mindfulness of breathing, and we practice the precepts, and we develop our awareness. So this practice that adds to all that is called the I don't know practice. It's a little known practice. So that's what I want to talk about. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm very aware that at the moment um, there's a lot of people that feel they do know or think they do know. And it's a very dangerous thing when we think we know because it... Um, solidifies everything. It solidifies our attitudes and our views and I think often it comes from a state of, of fear. A fear of um, being out of control, of, yes, of not being able to control everything, uh, a fear of being wrong, a fear of uh, not asserting ourselves, all sorts of things. So I've become very aware of the opposite of the I don't know practice. In other words, people um, knowing in quite an extreme way, um, well, in the midst of this crisis. So a lot of people seem to know that, um, you know, the government are doing nothing about getting PPE equipment and so on. Um, people are knowing a lot about when the government should have started lockdown, which is probably a lot earlier than they did. So there's all these views and opinions, and I think it's coming out of fear, coming out of fear um, that these extreme numbers we're being shown every day of people that are dying and so on. Um, yeah, fear that uh, everything is out of control, and gosh, we need control. So the fact that we can't control everything, especially a virus that, you know, hasn't got any weapons, it hasn't got any swords um, or guns or anything, you know, it can't be seen and yet it's having this massive effect. And so the way that we shore up our sense of insecurity is by thinking that we know. So the don't know practice is a very important one, you know, because what the, the don't know practice does is it opens us up. So, you know, I confess that I'm a person with a lot of opinions, a lot of very strong opinions, really. And in the last few years, I've just been trying to hold them a lot more lightly and to listen more deeply to other people so that I'm truly open to, um, to other people's way of seeing the world. So, you know, um, the media at the moment is full of knowing, full of, of laying down how it is and what's not being done in the way that it should be done. But actually, we don't know. There is an awful lot that we don't know. So we don't know how this virus is going to develop. We don't even know if once you've had the virus, um, whether you can get it again. We, we just don't know these things. So what is the point of us sinking into fear and retreating into I know, um, when actually everything is so uncertain. So in a way, uncertainty can ho help us to be very open and soft and relaxed in the face of uncertainty, in, in the face of not knowing. So we can practice this in noticing how our thoughts, the kind of thoughts that arise in our mind that seem very persuasive, that seem very certain, that reassure us of who we are. 
So our own personality is used to us being a certain way. You know, we've got these strong habits of this is how we are. This is how we've always been and this is how we'll always be. So Buddhism teaches us to have a lot more flexibility. Um, so to be with I don't know about myself and my personality opens up the possibility that I can change. It also means that I don't get fixated upon what other people are saying, what the news is saying. It means that I don't have to get angry and uptight and um, self-righteous about how things are at the moment because there is so much that we don't know. So we're opened up to immense possibilities if we don't know. Do you know how today is going to be? I don't know. And that's great because it just opens up immense possibilities. I don't even know if this makes any sense to you. See, flexibility is everything. You know, the world is not black and white, much as the media would like to pretend that it is, that this is how it is. So, in a way, things are much more mysterious than that. They're much more nuanced than that. They're much more um, inclusive than that. So this dualistic mind that we have, that wants to swing one way or the other, that wants to be able to say this is pleasant, this is unpleasant. You know, things are much more complex than that. I was very struck by that last night um, in the foundation course. Uh, there were several of us um, talking about how, well, in this time of great distress for some people, you know, in this time when there, you know, there are all these people dying in hospital, ill. There are thousands of people that are bereaved. But actually, we don't need to feel guilty that actually that's not us today. We don't need to feel guilty that the sun is shining, that we're able to go for a walk, that we've got nice food to eat. You know, we don't have to feel guilty about that. We need to be able to hold it all. You know, we are not in that position. But it doesn't mean also that we fall into, thank goodness it isn't me. Because we can hold compassion uh, in our heart. We can still feel deeply for all the people that are suffering, while at the same time um, rejoicing in today, rejoicing in the sun, the birds in the garden, the fact that we can go for a walk. We can rejoice in all that. So I'm going to leave it for there today. See you again. Stay well and enjoy your day without guilt, but with compassion in your heart.